great care and love. How we can do that? Mostly the parents have don't uh, have a lot of patience when certain things are happening. Immediately they want change to happen in uh, uh, children. Immediately they force and they say they're strict and uh, they're perfect parents. They want perfect children and they criticize everything. And, uh, you know, it's not nurturing discipline. They try to discipline, sometimes a harsh discipline. We have a conditioning that spare the rod and spoil the child. And at least so two sticks must be broken. You know, that's what I've gone through in my childhood. My grandmother used to hit me because I was sent to her and she has, she's so responsible that I have to become good in the academics. I was just a small child, you know. She's expecting me in the LKG and, uh, you know, first standard, I want to be a topper. That's why I refused to learn. I rejected the learning. At a very younger age, I said, I don't study. I don't like studies. And I became a rebel. You know, if it is a nurturing discipline, it's completely different. The child is given, you know, the time for play, the time for academics, time for everything. And there is a beautiful time that is spent with the child, the quality time of the parent spent with the child. Time is love. Time is called as love. When parent is coming into the home, the father takes his phone and speaks even at home about the business matters. The child is waiting. The son is waiting. He's ready to go to bed, but he has no time. The, my father loves his business more than me. That's what the child thinks. Mother is uh, very much uh, busy with uh, all those cereals like, uh, you know, uh, Sas Bahu cereal or something like that. It's very interesting for her. My mother loves uh, television cereal more than me. That's what her daughter and son feels. In a nurturing discipline, so essential that a guidance discipline is given. No limits need to be given to a child. There is a right and wrong. The wrong words are used by a child. Never make them feel guilty in that moment. Tell them that we have to be very aware of the right speech, right words, and certain behaviors. For example, a child who is very angry and hits the other children, neighbor children. And nurturing discipline is teaching the child that it's not right to go and hit other children. And in a beautiful manner, it's the skill of a parent, a mother who has all the patience. She tells the stories and she explains and she has all the time in the world. And her father has all the time uh, to means quality time. I'm saying uh, in this busy world now, quality time is very less now, but quality time, at least an hour we spend without anything, you know, Parents are fully present. A mother fully is present with the daughter and son. And like that, it's so essential. And thanks once again for the question. And at this point, I... Okay, next question we can take. Yeah, yeah we have another question. Uh, what is the ideal age to have kids? After how okay. many years of marriage do you suggest we have kids? Okay, there's... Uh, uh, no ideal age like uh, now nowadays we see a trend that uh, they want most of the new generation now the few this uh, times after you know when they reach around 25 plus they are having kids but in the previous generations we have seen that below 20 years they used to have children so i don't find any kind of problem with the age right age when they are ready how they are become becoming ready is number one is am i ready to bring a child into the world can i be a conscious responsible parent it's a huge responsibility it's a great spiritual experience too motherhood and fatherhood so they must ask themselves am i ready can I take care of the child? Do I have time? Do I, do I really have enough knowledge now? Am I equipped? Before we become a parent, we, one need to be equipped with this and then they become the really good parents. Well, I say good parents, we don't need to become idealistic parents because conscious parents are not idealistic. There are no ideals, only they have compassion, a lot of love and care and consciousness is there and they constantly learn from their own 
uh, every every moment they learn they update themselves and uh, also uh, we can say that uh, conscious parents they can decide the time when they are ready they feel intuition both the parents are meditating together and they get this idea the thought that yes now we create uh, a vehicle physical vehicle for a master to come into this world they get this intuition they must follow that and that's the right age so there's no right age like uh, only thing is we need to be ready okay yes. would you have time for a couple of more questions yes yes most welcome okay so um we did some damage to our kids unconsciously now how can we correct that at this right time? okay yeah how can we correct if we have already damaged uh first thing is as we you have gone through this now the session you might have feel felt guilty sometimes uh certain things are becoming aware you're becoming aware don't feel guilty guilt never serves any purpose guilt is self sabotaging and what serves life is when you can bring a change a transformation now when you change yourself now in this very moment you are undoing the damage that's done like i show in the form of uh, uh, some figurines here i'll let me put this uh, uh video uh, camera i'll switch it on let me change this now can you look at this yes yeah uh, some figurines you are seeing right yes yeah so in these figurines you can see i placed here father and the mother okay father and the mother parents uh huh okay and i'm going to bring these two kids also here uh one is the daughter okay and there is a son one is little daughter and the son for example these parents have gone through a lot of tough uh, situations in their own life for example they were wounded themselves like uh, i put the grandparents here okay and also grandparents of uh, the father also both sides you can see yeah. uh, three generations now <laughs> the, right. the two small kid children you know there's some damage is done here because the parents they are not looking at them but they are this mother is you know wants to look at the mother her mother mm -hmm. because uh, she did not receive enough love and she is enmeshed entangled entangled with her own mother mother beaten up and mother scolded her mother <laughs> so many things and father not available <laughs> and home <laughs> he is very busy and both of them for example they are absent he is very busy in his business he is not looking at the children and he is uh, in the work he is focusing on his work and these children they really go through this trauma what happens is unmet needs i told those needs are not fulfilled they feel um, that i we are not worthy of love of my parents they don't love because we are not worthy i we don't deserve we are inferior and they feel ashamed also if there is a kind of uh, aggression in the parents for example they are beating the children whatever yeah. those undealt emotions they showing projecting on the children they are going to shame the children children feel carry the shame oh there's something wrong with me i'm bad i must be very uh, bad person manufacturing defect <laughs> something like that you know yeah. uh, and what is how do we correct it now these parents need to now become conscious parents even though there's some damage done okay they need to uh, become conscious parents first they become meditators 
They practice meditation. Meditation raises their awareness levels, expands their consciousness levels, and they really become aware of their own wounds. This parent, this parent, they become aware of their own emotional wounds they carried from their own childhood, and now these two children. through the heart you tell the, to the children that unconsciously i was projecting my emotions to you i was not available to you both of you my dear son and daughter i acknowledge the fact that i really has damaged you both but i was unconscious at that time now i really realize these facts that there is a uh, some damage done to you really i feel sorry for that i don't now ask for anything but i change myself my children you don't need to carry my wounds our wounds and you deserve good life parents need to tell the children you are you know uh, such masters born to us and uh, you can really fulfill everything in life you can really manifest every goal of you you deserve good life and these children then can look at the future their future in forward they can move forward they have healthy separation and the guilt they carry sometimes because of the unconscious parenting they can heal it and uh, through meditation that that's how it can be done and I, it's so beautiful yes yes sudha ji i have a question uh, uh, do they uh, transform through meditation right away or do you think that before that they should seek some kind of psychological or uh, spiritual counseling some kind of counseling particularly i recommend uh, spiritual counselors normal psychologists psychiatrists they don't have enough of this yeah. knowledge they don't have spiritual dimension yeah. what i shared today is about the spiritual dimension of psychology right, right. spiritual psychology right so so the, the, maybe some people they they require that but meditation i have found 80% of the parents they respond Okay. meditation is itself is uh, a beautiful uh, insights they come and the gro growth that happens with meditation right, right. yeah right. so any more questions we can take yeah there is another question uh, we made a conscious decision to have a single child but my child yeah. craves for a sibling will this lead to some issue in my child in the future what can we do to ensure she accepts okay so even though the the child is requesting and uh, is looking for another sibling but it's the parents decision so it can be told in a beautiful manner to the child that uh, this is what we decided and uh, we take care of you and there are many other children who can be your friends you can play with them and most of the single children have problems because they don't have companion to play that's why most of the children siblings they they look for a sibling they want a sibling because they feel so lonely at home and uh, but even the children who are single children and uh, they they are allowed to play allowed to interact with other children they are allowed to you know sometimes to go with uh, certain kinds of games with uh, sports with other children and they really like it they don't feel bad about having not having a sibling right right yeah it won't affect actually not it will not affect the life of a child it's a decision always of the parent right for example uh, i we decided myself and uh, dr lakshmi we decided not to have children because at yeah. that point of time we have taken up this uh, huge project right we know that we have to move around the globe and we don't have, will not have time and uh, bring out the children and keeping them with grandparent that's not the way we, right. i realize that parenting is really a responsibility full time job so we 
Well, now Quantum Life University project has become our child. Yeah. It has become our beautiful Winter. child. Yes. Yes. I have another very interesting question uh, from a viewer. She's asking, uh, you explained that uh, the father had a very important role to play in the raising of the child as well, right? Yeah. Uh, as important as the mother's. But what happens in the case of a single parent? Now, how does a single parent fulfill, um, you know, create that both the divine masculine feminine dynamic uh, for the child? Okay, yeah. If uh, uh, the child is staying with the mother, uh, yeah, I'll keep my picture, my, let me share my video, then I have to change the camera. I think now it's okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So, so in a single parent, like a mother who has children and uh, the father, uh, she was divorced. And what happens to uh, the children, single parent, and uh, can she fulfill uh, the role of the, the masculine energy as well? Yes, because certain uh, conditions, certain things which, are, which happened already, what happens is the mother has two roles now. Mother will be playing a role of a uh, mother also as a father, a provider, also like a nurturing father, the two roles. It's hard, it's burdening, but it, this is what it is, you know then they don't miss, there are no consequences on the children. Even a single parent is enough. Because now we, nowadays we see that many uh, couple, they separate uh, after having children and uh, the children go through that, you know. So a, a, one single parent also can fulfill. But ideally, what is right is uh, two parents. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Now I have a question of my own. Uh, I'm going to sc switch my screen as well. Yeah. Um, is it okay to not give children everything they want, to immediately rush to gratify all their needs beyond the basic ones? Is it okay to allow them to experience boredom, failure, disappointment, and hurt without immediately rushing to apply the balm on it, to soothe it or to heal it by distracting them you know, or bribing them with some other promise uh, or toy or entertainment? Yeah, yes, Sudhaji, that's really an interesting question. Because uh, now uh, we see in the world, there's a, uh, always everyone is craving for instant gratification. We, yeah. we want everything instantly. Now we think and we want everything immediate. Yeah. And uh, we, we many children are like that, you know, when they look at uh, the phones, iPhones and uh, uh, computer games or video games, they, they immediately, I want that guy, uh, that toy, this toy, and immediately they go into a temper tantrum right in the mall. They right. make uh, such a, a drama there, and uh, it's really tough uh, for a parent. Sometimes they have to be a little hard on them. You know, but, why they develop these temper tantrums, why they develop this uh, kind of instant gratification is because there's already certain uh, unmet needs and wounding process, conditioning process already happened even right. much before that. You know, right. when a child is given the most essential things, they don't look for non-essential things. Right. The most essential, we talked about the parents' time, affection, approval, hugs and caring and uh, going for a vacation and all that playtime. When it is not there, the child uh, is really missing the most essential things in the life. And parents generally very clever. They try to bring substitutes for love. They buy toys to the child. Right. Know, but a child knows that this is a toy. They initially right. don't want a toy. They want real love of the parent. They want a hug of the parent. They want a two hours time of the father playing and uh, the child wants, the son wants to climb on the uh, shoulders of the father and play with him, you know, pull his hair. And all that. And uh, this is what is called as primal wound that happens much earlier. And later on, the child goes into instant gratification. They always demand things, you know, if you really love me, buy me the toy, buy me this thing, I need this. It's not really they're asking for toys and things and substitutes. Like uh, sometimes they, when they become a teenager, they ask for motorbikes, cars, and expensive right. thing, the most expensive things. 
and uh, you know uh, they go into they really fight with the parents about it and though parents are rich sometimes this instant gratification you know the children demanding certain things is coming from a uh, wound whatever right. is uh, that happened really parents when they give what is the most essential things this will not happen and also teaching the child to delay the gratification yeah. is so important at a very younger age right. at a very younger age even though they like uh, certain things they can say that let us wait for till your next birthday we'll all going to have your new bicycle where you can ride on it uh, uh definitely we're going to have it we, meanwhile we'll equip it all the fun money that's needed and we must a parent must uh, immediately uh, really teach this uh, delaying the gratification yeah i guess it's all about engaging as energetically as you can with the child to divert right. yes yes right that was amazing amazing um your talk is one of the most profound and insightful talk that i have ever heard you have covered so much ground with your seven sutras that it's a challenge almost to capture it in a nutshell a lot of what you speak of it seems goes back to the parent himself um i love your sharing of the, your childhood experiences and how it impacted your adult life in our culture especially uh we tend to repress our feelings um fears hurts and abandonment which later turn into our inner child wounds that seems to be the point that you emphasized um you know and uh, how we need to provide a warm nurturing safe environment for the children balancing freedom with guidance mm -hmm. and uh as the parent so the child right yeah. that that is a very interesting point and 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 i love the an analogy of the seed and the tree you know it's how you what what are the conditions you create for the child to grow up in that ultimately reflect in him uh, a lot of what you spoke totally resonated with me uh, and i completely totally enjoyed your talk and i do hope you come back again and again to share your profound wisdom and uh, thank you so much for shining your light and we hope to see you again soon thank and you now, sudhaji yeah i hand it over to shrikant and uh, sheetal to take over from here namaste sir namaste sheetal ji right yeah <laughs> yes namaste. very 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 great to see you today sir this is one of the best moment of my life uh thank you so much for accepting our request and coming and sharing your knowledge and wisdom uh, to the us folks and all over the world to make our kids rainbow kids with your seven sutras sir i like the word what you use rainbow kids <laughs> <laughs> really we need uh, rainbow children rainbow kids thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir namaste sir newton sir this is shrikant sir ha <laughs> ah, shrikant ji namaste namaste, namaste sir sir uh, it has been a very long due for us sir <laughs> we've been wanting to do your session for long so long and uh, today it uh, manifested thank you very much for your time sir uh, it's my pleasure it's really i i really enjoyed uh, speaking interacting with all of you yes sir and uh, last uh, i think uh, uh, last year sir when i came to india i had a, a opportunity to visit the life university campus mm -hmm. it was a beautiful campus very nice energies good developments and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the time there sir <laughs> but uh, I, i somehow uh, on that particular day uh, i was not able to meet you there but i met you in uh, in pyramid valley bangalore yeah <laughs> so it was really nice sir wonderful talk good uh, subject and a very good uh, start for our uh, full day event sir thank Excellent. you thank you very much sir wonderful wonderful thank you thank you once again thank you and i wish all the uh, viewers uh, to absorb all the wisdom from other masters uh, today in the summit and uh, thanks for inviting me here uh, shital ji and uh, uh, shikant and sudha ji and all the psm uh, usa thank you yes yeah, so just one uh, last thing sir uh, 
you mentioned few books so some of the viewers wanted those books again uh, so that we can list it down if you don't okay, okay. Sure. sure i can recommend few books uh, maybe i'll put it in the chat box here yes sir yes sir uh, john bradshaw one author that i highly recommend john bradshaw Uh, there are few books like Homecoming and about a lot of about the childhood uh, wounding process and inner child. And uh, Bert Hellinger is such an inspiration to me. This uh, German master, he's a philosopher, guide, and a spiritual scientist, and uh, uh, amazing master. He's a uh, family constellation or original founder. He's a founder of family constellation process. And I learned a lot from this master. And uh, I think these are the two. And uh, I was mentioning about another one, Mark Freshett. I think it's the right spelling. Mark Freshett, uh, who has researched about the project purpose, project purpose. Many children uh, who carry the unconscious ambitions and unfulfilled desires of the parents as their purpose how to recognize it, how to recognize your own inner purpose for which you're born. You know, Mark Freshett is the author. I think he has written uh, a book is there, but uh, I read his research work, research papers. Okay, sir. Okay, the street. Yeah. Right, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank sir. you, thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Lot of curiosity and we are looking forward to hear from Lakshmi Madam as well from uh, next time. Thank you. Thank you from our bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks to Patriji uh, being a, a divine uh, guide, and guide uh, a spiritual guide to the entire umbrella of uh, Brahma Shri Pitama Patriji. Uh, it's really uh, world uh, is really expanding spiritually, uh, raising the levels of consciousness and uh, my Gratitude to Master Grand Master Patriji. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all now, and uh, it's time.